Hey, thanks for joining me. I'd like to show you how to explicitly set the location of the row edit template on the web data grid. Now, what we're dealing with here is basically, uh, let me run this page and you can kind of get an idea of what's going on. We've got a, a regular uh, web data grid and when you enable the row edit template, what happens is when you double click on the row selector, it'll bring up this template that basically allows you to edit the contents of the entire row at one time. The default behavior for the grid is that you can tab through or go through individual cells, but this gives you an, a, the opportunity to edit the entire row. Now, the row will show up depending on where um, things are at within the, the grid. So if I double click down here, the template shows up above the row. If I come over here, the template shows up below the row. Some users want to be able to explicitly set the location of that edit template, and so I'll show you what's involved in order to make that happen. Now, if we look down at our page, we have just a standard ASP.NET uh, web forms page. We've got the script manager here. We've got our web data grid. I've got some bound fields. We're just looking at the item ID and the description and the quantity. And the behaviors here, this is the markup. If I show you through the smart tag, uh, it's, it's a, a lot less intimidating. But basically, the row edit template has been um, enabled. And we have the, the client findings. Basically what happens here is that the controls that are in the template know how to uh, update the data within the grid uh, based off of the controls that are, are, are shown uh, to the user. So we've got the client bindings, the templates, and everything that we need um, for the row edit template to work. If I go back to the code behind, you can see really this is very basic uh, as far as what's happening. I'm just populating the grid with a, a list of 10 invoice objects, and I'm kind of leaving it at that for now. The purpose I want to show you here um, really is to see how you can um, deal with placing the row edit template. So now that we have that, uh, let, let's switch over to the design view. And we'll open up the smart tag. And I'll give you the other view of having this behavior enabled. So here we come in, we've got the editing core, we've got cell editing turned on, which is fine. The row edit template, which is the one that we're, uh, we're working for right now. Now, if you turn on row edit templates, it's going to ask you to turn on the row selectors. And that's so that you can click on the row selector in order to have something to expose the edit template. So we'll head up to the row edit template, and in here we'll expand the row editing client events. And I wanna take a look at the template opened. Uh, event and we'll kind of tap into that. So here's the template opened and what I want to do is run this function here and we'll just call it on template opened. Now that we've got that, I'll go ahead and hit apply and then uh, drop back to the page and go into the source. Now I'm going to paste in some, some script here. I'll go through it line by line but just so you don't have to watch me type it all out. This is the function that will run. So we basically have our sender and our event args. Uh, which is the standard um, signature for these functions, and the row template opened function here. So the first thing that we want to do is find the container. Now, if you'll remember, what we're looking for is, run this again real quick, this container right here. Now, I, you can already see that the functionality is uh, intercepting it to put it in a, a particular spot, but we're, we're looking for what's in this box here, this uh, edit container. So what's happening is we take a look at the behaviors in the grid and then we find the editing core. From the editing core, then we look at its sub behaviors and we find the row edit template. And then we want to find the drop down behavior and this is basically where it was going to where it will show up in relation to that row. And then we want to find the target container. Once we have that, then what we can do is change the style to whatever you want it to do. And I've done it explicitly here. In code and so we can say uh, you know whatever we want just affect the style here any way possible but doing this type of script will give you explicit control and some people want to be able to put the, in an edit area on the screen and this will allow you to do that so one more time let's run this page take a look at the grid double click on the, the row selector and you can see we've given explicit uh, instructions on where this uh, edit template should show up anytime one of them is opened. Well, thanks a lot for checking out this video. And if you have any questions about what you've seen, please feel free to send me an email at cshoemaker at infragistics.com.
If you want to take a look at the documentation for any one of our products, you can go to infragistics.com slash docs. And if you'd like to contact our support, you can go to infragistics.com slash support. Thanks again for checking us out and make sure you check out the website where you'll find a lot more videos that will help you get started with the NetAdvantage tool set. Infragistics. On the web at infragistics.com.